people are informed so that they have a choice. But then you guys were, I find it interesting that you guys pointed out that they're imposing a lot of things in a way. Yes. Mm -hmm. The latter part of the bill, they actually give, like, if you don't go along yes. with the bill, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to be jailed for so and so no years, mm -hmm. you're going to be fined this much. Is that for, um, for people or just for the health workers? Just for health workers, but mm -hmm. that's basically people. Yes, you're, you're dictating. Yeah. That's right. You're dictating people. You're saying they should do this when in mm -hmm. fact they're, they, they can have their, they can make their own decisions. So, mm -hmm. And then I'm going to just quote no, something no. here. It says, um, in cases of disagreement, the decision of the one undergoing the procedure shall prevail. Oh, uh, first of all, whole thing. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Section so twenty-eight prohibited acts too. This is refusal to perform legal and medically safe reproductive health procedures on any persons of legal age on the ground of lack of third-party consent or authorization. In case of married persons, the mutual consent of the spouses shall be preferred. However, in, in cases of disagreement, the decision of the one undergoing the procedure shall prevail. And in cases of abused minors, where parents or other family members are the, are the respondent, accused, or convicted perpetrators as certified by the proper prosecutorial officer court, no parental consent shall be necessary. I don't really... First of... What I'd like to know first of all is what are these legal and medically safe reproductive health procedures? Because in in the very beginning of the bill, in section two, it says we recognize that abortion is like uh, illegal and punishable by law and all these things. And I know there was a lot of talk about abortion because before I read the bill, um, like pe what people had told me was like, oh, it it forward yeah, it, they're legalizing abortion. It's forwarding abortion. And then when I read the bill, they said it wasn't. But then they have like a lot of reference to legal and medically safe per like r procedures and like mm -hmm. what are these procedures? You want them to name this. For example, you pointed out legal, legal and medically safe reproductive health procedures. So they could be referring to IUDs or ligation or um, I was going to say castration, but that's not a term, vasectomy. <laughs> I mean, uh, and, but you're right. It seems to uh, imply something else, no? Any person of legal age, da, 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 in case of a disagreement, the one undergoing the procedure. So maybe this is for, I mean, there, there are cases where, let's say, you know, uh, older women uh, are pregnant and then they're, they're uh, their they, their feet the fetus dies inside and they have to they have to uh, do a DNC you know to remove the dead fetus and all that but I, I what does that mean is that is that what it means I know I know what you're saying that it's a little bit vague it's very vague and and was this part however in case of disagreement the decision of the one undergoing the procedure shall prevail how do you guys feel about that what yeah that that puts, like, I was why even bother because before that it says mutual consent is preferred but then after that it says Whoever wants to undergo the procedure will be followed. So what's the mm -hmm. what bills making pa simple? Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's it's too vague, no? Then it's open to any kind of interpretation. I guess that's what you're saying. Okay. Yes. Are there any other parts of the bill that uh, maybe we can choose a few parts? And by the way, you guys out there listening, call in eight nine seven eight three seven four eight nine five. 4460 or 895 4244. You can agree, you can disagree. It doesn't matter. Just uh, explain your point of view in in a um, in in a respectful way. Okay. So there's this one part of the bill, section 20, entitled Ideal Family Size, where it says that um, the state shall assist couples, parents, individuals, etc. Um, to achieve their desired family size within the context of responsible parenthood and encourage them to have two children as an ideal family size but that it's not mandatory but they nor ideal family compulsory. Size mm -hmm. So, because like when I was reading a lot of things in the bill, it, I felt like what it was proposing is already happening. Because mm -hmm. if you're going, it says that you're going to um, assist families assist that have to, uh, like a kind of two child policy. Yeah, like first you're saying that before mm -hmm. they can get a marriage certificate they have to know that they should only have two children etc etc and then you're going to say it's neither mandatory nor, com nor compulsory so what's the use? It's slight brainwashing. What what did you say earlier? Parang the bill? Making pa simple. Making pa simple. Yeah, it's a, it contradicts itself a little bit. Actually, if I turned in a... Uh, I, if... Uh, 
I turned in a term paper like this, I would totally shred. Yeah, honestly, like that's what I said. I was discussing it with a couple of my family members, and I was saying, if this was like a paper in school, and I were the teacher checking it, I would be like, I no, I big question mark. Going into question our mark. congress, yeah, and the Senate. So was th- what does that say yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. Now, you guys, I want to ask you something, and then each of you have to answer. It. Would you have a problem with the bit? Let's say they amended it, no, and they they changed it and you know tweaked it to let's say something that was more acceptable i mean if all of these amendments were made and it's no longer the rh bill that it is right now or some form would you be open to that or are you just totally against any kind of legislation on uh, that has to deal with the issue honestly we can't say until they actually change it or yeah. until they fix some parts because we will never know until we can actually see it before our very eyes because they could at, like change maybe one sentence in the entire bill and then pass it that could be their version of changing it but we can't uh, we can't say anything until we actually get a like a copy in front of us and we go through it again yes and, and personally for for me to agree with it i they need to change a lot of things mm-hmm. and clarify a lot of things. Mostly what I want is clarification on what they're proposing because this is going to go into our law. It's going to, um, our nation's money is going to be used to fund this, the contraceptives and the family planning. And I'd, even though I'm not a taxpayer yet, I will be soon. And I'd want to know, like, if I were taxpayers, well, don't you want to know what your taxes are funding? I mean, it's... Yeah, but it's... <laughs> It's frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Um, well, for me personally, I think that when you're talking about something like w- when you pay for something, you want it, you want concrete actions or mm-hmm. concrete solutions to what you're paying for. So what we want is that if this bill does get passed, mm-hmm. um, the youth wants like concrete actions happening. Mm-hmm. We don't. We wouldn't want like. We wouldn't want our parents' money going to waste. We wouldn't want, we wouldn't want, um, the same problem happening again. How about you? I think um, if they do change the bill, you know, revise it to what you said, mm-hmm. like a more agreeable mm-hmm. version. I think what we would want more is specifics. Mm-hmm. Like they would name how exactly are they going to do this? How are they going to act on it? Because we're arguing about how vague it is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, basically, name how they're going to do it. Mm-hmm. How about you? So, yeah, um, as what they said, specifics and results mm-hmm. is what we want. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah. Your turn? Um, I think we have to change some part because um, it's not concrete. And I think some of the part, it's not really that effective because when you think about it there's some can I just say something more about sure, sex education so <sighs> teenagers <laughs> having teenagers having sex education they're they're known well about that thing so they think like they think they think they know they know already like yeah. it's, they think yeah. really like how do you say easy? Like they think, oh, they think it's so easy. Yeah, it's right. so easy. Like they think it's uh, especially it's not. It's not. It's not explained clearly. Then they think, they think that they know everything about it, and they s- they act recklessly anyway. But it has. Mm-hmm. It, it's kind of like sacred thing, right? But mm, they it's think a really. Thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they think really like oh, it's so simple to do it. Like let's do it because it's like they think easy about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like it's. Oh, it's like it. It doesn't mean. Anything. Anything. Yeah, for right. them. It's removing it's value impo- from what yeah, it actually is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, you said it's removing. It's removing value. It's mm-hmm. like um, degrading it to something mm-hmm. even lower than what it should be. Um, I think even though they try to change it, they're still going to be loopholes. Because no matter how they, they, they will try to make it perfect to pass it to get the consent of the citizens it's still not going to be like um, perfect as in to make the people think that um, oh I think it's right now because mm-hmm. right and wrong matters or matters differently from each people mm, I understand okay you want to say something? Um, no 
actually. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I um, we're actually running out of time. So is there anything else you would like to say? I think that a lot more people should go out and read the bill because mm-hmm. it's um it's it's a a pretty big topic and it's a it's a crucial time in our mm-hmm. country's history and we as Filipinos um, should be informed of what they want to do to our constitution and what we're going to be subjected to. Especially our generation because it will be our generation that will be affected the by most. this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just it's literally online. Just type in Google RH Bill four two four four. It's the first link that appears. Mm-hmm. Download the PDF, read it. It's pretty easy to understand too. But yeah. <laughs> expect frustration. <laughs> it's pretty easy to understand and then you're like, but what is this? So if you guys were teachers, how would you grade? <laughs> I wouldn't give it. I give it back. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I give it back and I tell her I don't get your paper. So how do you feel about? Uh, I don't know if you guys were watching it, but when they anyway they decided to end the debate because they they had the they didn't even go through a nominal voting. They just said okay, all those in favor, then I and then nay, you know, and they were like all oh, the eyes have it. How do you feel about that? Do you think they should have lengthened the debate? Do you see you know some kind of political railroading in in Congress happening? Yes, I think that the people they should allow the people who um, have things to say about it they should be able to say the piece especially the congressman mm-hmm. um, because what I've noticed is a lot of the people who were pro RH bill got to say their piece but the people who are anti RH bill mm-hmm. don't get to say their piece and it, I find it a bit unfair on uh, about um, on how the the people who don't agree with the RH bill are persecuted and we're called conservative and everything but it's it's really it's they're not even given the chance to say their side of the story. So yeah. it's not it's not it's not fair. It's not yeah. a democratic process anymore. Yes. yes. You guys really like what said I would give it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Con- do you think Congress should give it back and say to the drafters and say fix hey, it. Fix <laughs> yeah, fix yeah. it. Okay. Before we go, can you just say your names if you want your full name or just your first name and you know, you can greet anyone you want. Yeah, mm. uh, you know, say anything <laughs> you want. Just no cuss words. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fatima Dupano. Um, I'm from Woodrow School, and I'm really um, I'm anti RH bill. For the people of the youth, please before you make your opinions, please be please read the RH bill first and think about think about your future because this will affect you. Hi, I'm Monica Lorenzo. I'm 17, senior Woodrow's batch 2013. Um, for all. I'm anti RH bill, and honestly, if you, uh, there, I know a lot of the young people. They don't know what they're. They don't know much about the RH bill. Honestly, just get out and read it. It's not. It's not hard. You're always on the computer anyway, so you know. Might as well just read it. It's it's worth your time. Trust me. Hi, I'm Claudina Fable, a senior Woodrose. Um. Uh, yeah, I also encourage that especially the youth would read the RH bill it's better and it feels good to be informed you know <laughs> it's wonderful hello i'm isa kureg same level as everyone from the same school <laughs> and i'm the one who said i would give the paper back <laughs> 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 because you know if you read the paper you would realize that there are many loopholes and like what we said it contradicts what it states in some parts Okay, hi, I'm Ayumi Eji. I'm a senior from Woodrow's. Okay, I turned Catholic last year long. And then, as a foreigner from Korea, I think the fact that we, 16 or 17 years old, can find loopholes from that Irish bill that the congressman made, <laughs> I think they can, make, they can do something about it. They can fix it perfectly. Because, see, we, we even find the problems and we try to fix it. We try to clarify it by ourselves. I think they can do better than us. And then, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is M. Chong. I'm from Korea. And uh, sorry if I really, like, cannot speak English well. <laughs> sorry for, like, yeah. I'm from Nijos. I'm 16. And I'm I'm kinda anti RH bill, so I'm here. <laughs> um, I think people like who are listening this radio has to have to like you know read RH bill and think about it. 
I think you speak, write, and think better than some of the people who just wrote this and submitted it. <laughs> Go ahead, you. Hi, I'm Angelica Alberto. I'm from Woodrose. I'm a senior. And I want to, you know, tell everyone who's listening not to let us formulate your own opinions, but to read the bill and, you know, think about it. And think about what you think about it so that you will be able to see for yourself um, the logic behind it and if you agree with it or not. Because it's important to understand in matters like this. Okay, guys. I am not 17 and I am not <laughs> going to school. But I'm here with these kids and I want I want to invite you also to, you know, to read the bill and get informed. I mean, it's so nice to see 16, 17-year-olds uh, uh, take the time to actually read something that is a national issue and you know have formed their own opinions and and form uh, the you know what uh, sorry form their own opinions and you know talk about what they want what they don't want what they like what they don't like why they don't approve of something instead of just appealing to prejudice you know in to forward whatever argument is they are forwarding so all of you out there uh, how you get a copy of the reproductive health bill 4244 and you know it doesn't hurt we should be more involved i just want to say congratulations to you kids i'm very happy you're right it is your future and your generation who will uh, either benefit or suffer the most or from from the passing of this bill and you know um, well i'll be a little bit older but i hope i'll still be around when you're <laughs> like my age and you're moving and shaking the world thanks for being on the program today thanks for tuning in folks uh, maybe we'll play this again uh, on thursday just so that they can or tomorrow whatever one of those things so that you know it's it's good to to get that to hear about the debate and hear it from your from to hear your point of view thanks for tuning in to etc 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 today i'm nicole jacinto and you are listening to dzrj 8 10 a.m the voice of the philippines dzrj 8 10 a.m the voice of the philippines has just presented etc 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 with host Nicole Jacinto, etc., 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 is an exclusive presentation of DZRJ, 810 AM, the voice of the Philippines.